Today, I learned how to do summoning in RLCraft, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can too. The most important item you'll need for this guide is a summoning staff. The summoning staff is a magic item added by Lycanite's mobs. To use this staff, you need to have a magic level of 8. The summoning staff can summon temporary minions by holding down right click. When using the summoning staff, it will drain your summoning focus. You can view your summoning focus above your hunger bar when holding a summoning staff. To craft the summoning staff, it requires one ender pearl, one bone, and one gold ingot. You now have everything to begin summoning. In order to summon creatures from RLCraft, you have to get close to them to achieve knowledge level 1, which will give you the ability to summon them. Once you've discovered a few of these mobs, press G to open the bestiary. The bestiary is a very important part of summoning. There are five tabs in the bestiary. The index tab gives information about the mods and new updates. The Creatures tab allows you to look at the different mobs you've encountered, and see various information about them. The Pets tab allows you to see what pets you have soul-bounded to you. The Summoning tab allows you to configure what mobs you summon and their attributes. And the Elements tab gives you information about the elements and the impact on your Minecraft world. But today, we are only going to be focusing on the Summoning tab. When summoning minions, there are some changes you can make to the mob's behavior. You can enable PvP on or off for when you're playing with your friends if you want to summon, to attack, or to not attack other players and their summon. You can set the minion's stance to be passive and not attack anything, or defensive and attacks when something attacks you, or assist which makes your minion attack whatever you attack, or finally aggressive where your minion will attack everything. You can also change your minion's movement from making it follow you, wander by itself, or sit to stay in place. Each minion has a set focus cost. You can view the set focus right here and how much you have. The mobs that you can summon are all of these. Oh my goodness, please stop. That is way too many mobs. Oh my, okay, 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 yeah. Some mobs require you to fuse two mobs together in order to summon them, such as these mobs. But there are only a few that are actually useful. Aegis are an easy summon to begin with. They are one of the strongest summons in the game and are found in villages. Their only downside is that they are a bit slower than other summons. Arguses are a lot like Aegises, but are faster and have less defense. They can be found in the end or if you cause too much chaotic energy, which can easily be done by killing elementals. Banshees are one of the best mobs to summon in RLCraft. They are made by combining a Geonash and a Jin. They can attack through walls, they have a lot of health, good attack damage, and apply fear to enemies. Geonashes are just as good as Aegises, with two less base damage. These mobs can be found while mining, and will spawn when you disrupt the earth. Grooves are the best mob for underwater combat. They can be summoned by combining a Cinder and an Argus. Grooves can fly and are not affected by water, making them the best mob for underwater combat. Jabberwocks are the strongest land-based summon. They deal the most damage with the fastest attack speed. Their only flaw is that they cannot fly. Nymphs are the most efficient healing summon, but they barely deal any damage in combat, but is a good early ally to have in the beginning of the game. Spectres are the best summon. They deal massive damage that scales with your weapon. They have incredible speed, which allows them to attract dragons even while they're flying in the air. They have super quick attack speed and are summoned by using the Aegis and the Argus. Here's a few useful tips that I've learned about summoning minions and using them in combat. Having only one mob summoned is useless. It is good to have a large group of them. Most summons don't have a lot of health and will be killed off easily, so if you have a large group of them, you can do more damage before they die. Mobs with melee attacks get their damage boosted by whatever weapon you're holding. I would recommend setting the top 5 mobs you would like to summon in each of these slots as such, and then go to the keybinds and put your minion selection into whatever's comfortable for you. I have mine set as Z. You can repair the summoning staff using gold ingots on an anvil. There's also more than one summoning staff. In fact, there are four others. The blood staff, costs the user half the focus cost by sacrificing your health in its place. The Savage Staff can summon double minions, but at half health each. The Stable Staff makes it so summoned minions last longer, but cost more focus. And the Sturdy Staff lasts much longer, but cost more focus. There's also a secret Sprigian Heart Equipment part, which can fire a projectile that summons your selected minion at no focus cost. There are also two other methods of summoning, using a summoning pedestal or a summoning altar. Summoning pedestals create a portal above them and constantly summon minions when fueled with redstone. These can be player-owned or unowned. Pedestals you own will be green, pedestals other players own will be blue, and pedestals owned by no one will be red. 
Red pedestals will summon wild minions that will likely be very hostile and dangerous. Players can also set their pedestals to PvP and aggressive, where spawned minions will attack other players. Summoning pedestals can be set to summon anything that a summoning staff can. Summoning altars are used to fight Arlcraft's toughest bosses. If you want a more in-depth video, then definitely leave a like and subscribe. I also have this uh, all armor in Arlcraft video, which is super helpful if you're going to fight bosses. Peace.